Right now, we're going to be blessed with a selection from the women of Zion entitled, I Am Blessed. Amen.
Amen. We are truly blessed. I have one announcement I would like to share, and that is on October the 28th, a Monday evening, uh, yes. the Youth Department will be hosting a Harvest Festival. All are invited to come and worship with us during that service. Now, at this time, of course, it's a great pleasure to introduce our very own Suffragette Bishop, Charles L. Smith, as he brings us the words of life, spiritual life from the Word of God. And we're going to say a, ha a hearty hallelujah and welcome him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Thank you for that wonderful, amen, <laughs> greeting. Hallelujah. I thank God for being here today. And I, I am blessed. Amen. I am blessed. I am blessed above measure, and you don't know, like I know, how much I truly am blessed. But I thank God for all of you who have come to hear the word of the Lord today, and I thank God for our women's choir. Didn't they do a good job? Amen. Amen. Thank God for them as well. We're going to turn to the book of Ephesians this afternoon and read chapter 4 verse 1 through 6 the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 through 6 Amen We ask everyone who can to stand upon your feet in reverence word of the Lord. When you're ready, say amen. amen. Let us read. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with longsuffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. Father God, I bow before you and thank you for the thoughts that you have given to us already in the word of the Lord. And we pray that you will anoint your servant today as we preach and teach not only to the congregation that is here, but also into the homes and hospitals and nursing homes and wherever this message might go. We pray that it will touch hearts and minds and it will strengthen them in the word of the Lord. Please remember the dear saints who are sick today and those who are afflicted. I pray for their healing. You're a healer, Lord. You have healed many times. Hallelujah. And we believe that you're able to heal again. I pray for those whose hearts are bowed in sorrow. Hallelujah that they might be lifted up by the power of God. You're a burden bearer, you're a comforter, hallelujah. You're able to lift up those that are cast down and strengthen those that are weak. I pray that you will remember those that are not saved today that are in this congregation, who stand in need of your help. Help them to cry out unto you, Lord, save me before it is too late. Lord, bring me into your fold before, hallelujah, the judgment of God falls upon us, hallelujah. Help them, Lord God, to cry out in contrition unto you and say, ask for God to save them, hallelujah. Remember those, hallelujah, that are in prison and those that are behind prison walls. I pray that they will be saved that the Lord will bring them out and rehabilitate them 
and make them good citizens of the United States of America. Bless the words of your servant today, and whether they are many or few, we pray that your blessings will be upon them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our thought today, we have a lot of good thoughts in this text. We have the monotheism of God. We have a lot of wonderful things we could preach about, but the Lord told me to focus our attention today upon verse 3, which says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And our subject for today is the preservation of unity. Hallelujah. The word preservation is not a hard word to understand. It simply means to maintain. And there was another one that was in Webster's Dictionary. It says to keep from spoiling. Amen. Hallelujah. To keep from spoiling and to maintain. Hallelujah. There's a lot of division in the day and time in which we live. Hallelujah. There's lots in the homes and there are a lot in the world and there is sometimes a lot in the church. But it's not God's mind and it's not his will that we be divided in anything. Hallelujah. He said, well, hallelujah, how can we all agree? How can we all be on the same page? Well, if you're going to keep your opinion and I keep my opinion, and if you see it one way and I see it another way, we will never, ever get on the same page. Hallelujah. And without unity in the body of Christ, we cannot get anything done. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. We cannot accomplish our visions that we have. We cannot complete our programs that we have. We cannot have good success in any area of the church if we do not have unity. Hallelujah. We must work to preserve unity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must do a great effort in order to preserve unity. Hallelujah. In our text it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Hallelujah. Now I like words and I hope you will share today with and what I say and like as well, but I like words. Words speak to me. Words tell me things. Words explain things to me. It puts energy into what is being said. Hallelujah. The word endeavoring, the Greek word is S-P-O-U-D-A-Z-O, and it is pronounced spudazoe. And it is number 4704. Hallelujah. Endeavor means to, it has seven different meanings. Hallelujah. The first one is to exert yourself. Hallelujah. Uh, let you think about that one. The next one is to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. 
Hallelujah. The third one is to give diligence or give attention to keeping the spirit in unity in the bond of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four means to make haste. Mm. That's a powerful word. Make haste. Stop sitting there thinking about it. Stop saying in your mind, one of these days I'm going to get up and do something about keeping the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. I'm going to work for the preservation of the spirit in the bond of peace. But get up. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this message is different, but uh, we can sit in a chair all day and think about what we need to do and what we ought to do, but blessed is he or blessed is she who endeavors to accomplish the thoughts that are coming to their mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to sit around and talk about what we used to do 25 and 30 years ago, but I'm going to make some haste and I'm going to say, Lord, after this day, after this message, I want to get up and make some haste and do something. I'm tired of sitting around talking about what we used to do. Hmm. Get up out of your seat. Make some haste. Next definition is to be zealous. A person who is zealous has fire on the inside of them. I cannot rest until I see this done. I must do this, not for popularity, not because I want a pat on the back, not because I want somebody to say good things about me, but Lord, I feel the fire burning in my soul. Hallelujah. Amos said in his prophecy, the Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Ooh, hallelujah. I might be a gatherer of sycamore fruit. I may not even be a prophet, but the Lord has told me to speak to Israel and speak to Judah. And when I heard the voice of the Lord speak in my soul, my soul said, I can't keep picking uh, sycamore fruit. I cannot keep doing my farming. I got to go where the Lord told me to go. I got to do what the Lord told me to do. I'm not going to rest until I get it done. Oh, hallelujah. This is a strange message, Pastor. No, I believe that God is tired of laziness and slowfulness. I might get condemned. I might get some bad looks. But we got a work to do. And it's not one person, but it's the whole community that God has formed in the church. The Lord woke me up this morning and said, it's not one person. Don't blame yourself because things don't go right. Don't blame yourself because it looks like that things are slowing down. Don't blame yourself because people are leaving the church. Don't blame yourself because the attendance has fallen down. Because it involves a whole community. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 12 and 13 says, uh, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into 
one body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just the pastor and his wife and the deacons and the trustees and the heads of the auxiliaries. It's not just the people that are out front trying to motivate and make things work. Hallelujah. It's the other people that is around them and with them. We work as a unit. We work as one. To preserve the unity of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if everybody don't work, can we still have unity? Yes. But everybody who is in the community has to be in sync with the same purpose, with the same goal. With the same objective before it will work. Hallelujah. 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 Spudazoe means strain every nerve. That is in you to preserve the unity of the church. Hallelujah. I've heard a lot of people say, well, they, they get on my last nerve. Well, you don't know how nervous they make me be. They get on my last nerve. I feel like going off on somebody. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. What are you working on? I don't want to be a hindrance to the cause of Christ. I don't want to cause something to fail. I don't want to cause something to be a stumbling block to somebody else. I don't want people leaving the church because of me. They might leave, but I don't want them to leave because of me. They may not feel like worshiping here anymore, but it's, I don't want it to be because of me. I'm straining every nerve that is in me to try to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond. Hallelujah. 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 Meaning number seven is to further the cause diligently. Hallelujah. Word endeavoring is a strong word and shows great effort and action. If we are going to keep the unity of the Spirit, it will require much effort on everyone's part. Hallelujah. We will have to get out of our comfort zone. Oh, hallelujah. We will have to do something different uh, than what we have already done. We will have to shake ourselves and say, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to move up higher. I'm going to move out and do what the Lord told me to do. And if there is a program that is in the church, I will support it 100%. Because I want unity. Not Hallelujah. I didn't expect to get on one leg today. Hallelujah. We have a job to do. And we need everybody that's listening to me. Plus the ones that God is going to send to us. We must make every effort to accomplish the task. Hallelujah. We must do all we can to further 
the cause diligently. And we got to make haste because Jesus is coming soon. We must develop a desire for unity. Hallelujah. 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 I want to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The Greek word for peace in chapter verse 3 is uh, spelled E-I-R-E-N-E -E, and it's I-R-E-N-E number 15 and 15. It means the state of rest, quietness, calmness, the absence of strife. Hallelujah. There must be something happen where we will work for peace, where we will strive for peace, where we endeavor to build up each other and hold on to one another. We need one another. No man is an island. No woman stands alone, but God put the church together as it pleased him so that we might be able to strengthen one another. Hallelujah. 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 We need four great qualities before we can have peace. Hallelujah. The first one is lowliness. The saints must have this quality of lowliness because, hallelujah, we want to Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Hallelujah. The persons who have this quality are low key and assume a low position or rank. Philippians 2 and 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in loneliness of mind, let us esteem other better than ourselves. Ooh, hallelujah. If we're going to have unity, we have to push each other and not ask for the praise for ourselves. Don't ask for the accolades for yourself. But Lord, help me to push somebody else. If somebody sings a good song, let me tell them you did a good job. Keep on singing for the glory of God. Keep on praising him for the glory of God. You preached a good sermon, hallelujah, on Friday night. You did a great job on Friday night. Don't go, hallelujah, I know somebody that could have did better than that. So this ain't the sermon for this morning. Yes, it is. Because we're trying to preserve unity. We're trying to keep things together so that we can move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Keeps getting quieter and quieter. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we need loneliness. I'd like to see the time when each person would try to edify somebody else. They would try to build up somebody else. And they may feel like, well, I didn't do very good today, so, you know, I'm just going to sit down. I ain't going to really get up. But accolades and hugs and affection between ourselves, boost us up to 
a higher level. Negative criticism brings us down. But if saying just a word to that person to encourage them, you see them crying, hallelujah, hallelujah. show them some love. You see they feel bad, try to encourage them. You see that Satan is trying to do something to them. Find out a way that you can help them. Maybe all they need is a big bear hug. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, not too hard. You heard my back. <laughs> Maybe. We need loneliness. We need to come in on the low ground. We, we need meekness. Hostility and anger. And controversy. And strife. Should not be once named among us as the children of God. Because if you love me and I love you, I'm not going to argue with you. We ain't going to have a knockdown, carry out argument in the hall outside, but we are going to love each other. If I can't say nothing, hallelujah, that is good, I'll shut my mouth. Yeah. Yes, Let you keep on talking because you're going to stop pretty soon anyway. Yeah. Loneliness, meekness, mild. We need to be like Jesus. <laughs> I know if I talk about Jesus, you're, you're lighting up because he, we love Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus was on the cross, and they were mocking him. They was going around bomb the cross and, come down, save yourself and save us. But he was saving them all the time. Some of those people he had fed. Some of them he had cast devils out of. Some of them he had given sight to the blind. He had raised the dead. He had fed 5,000 and 3,000 people with food. Hallelujah. They're looking up at the cross and, and telling Pilate, crucify him, crucify him. Let this man die. Ooh, hallelujah. But Jesus looked down upon his accusers and said, Father, Father, forgive them. The devil is making them do that. Forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. I'm saving them all the time. And they're still complaining. I'm bringing them out of sin and darkness. And they're still complaining about me. I'm talking about Jesus, not Pastor Smith. Hallelujah. But he was our example of suffering. If you think you're suffering more than Jesus, you better go and read the Bible because the Bible said we, we have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Ain't nobody drawed blood out of us. Ain't nobody whipped us until blood ran down in our pants or down our legs. Might have had some bad things said, but we haven't suffered like Jesus suffered. But he had a non-violent attitude. And no matter what people did to him, he still loved them. Oh, hallelujah. 
No matter how bad they talked about him, he still loved them. No matter how they did bad things and accused him of being Beelzebub, he did not kill them. But he showed love. Hallelujah. We need long-suffering so that we can preserve Unity in the church. Long suffering is well described by many theologians. It has the word long on one side and the word suffering on the other side, and there's a line drawn from long to suffering. I've seen it displayed on the board. Uh, long suffering begins with long, and it has a long line that goes clear over to the word suffering. And many of the teachers, when they would say about long suffering, they would say long suffering. We need long suffering. You know why? Because we're all different. Everybody in here got a different DNA. Everybody got a different education. Everybody got a different raising or cultural background. Even color gets in it sometimes. Hallelujah. Hair gets in it sometimes. Education gets in it sometimes. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you today, Jesus Christ died on the cross for all men. In this text, the Jews were fighting the Gentiles. Hallelujah. I ain't going to read the scriptures. Uh, hallelujah. I'll let you read them for yourself. But Paul was trying to tell them that when... Hallelujah. Jesus died on the cross. He abolished the things that kept them apart. He died carrying the sins of many. He died carrying the issues of many. He died carrying partiality. He died carrying divisions. He died carrying the things that separate the Jews from the Gentiles. Made them one on the cross. Who shot out. Hallelujah. When he died, the curtain in the temple was rent in twain from the uh, top to the bottom. Hallelujah. And opened up a door of access for the entire human family. Anybody through the name of Jesus can have direct access into the presence of God. If you don't believe what I'm saying, let a car be coming down the road almost ready to kill you. And you holler, Jesus! It changes the atmosphere. It changes the paradigm. Ooh, shut up. Because at the name of Jesus, when we use that name, when we speak that name, it is not just for the Smith family, but it's for every family. When we talk to Jesus, when we call on Jesus, it's not just for the Jews, but it's for everybody. It's not just for the men, but it's for everybody. That name, the name of Jesus brought us together. We may have had issues with various things, but his name brought us together. Hallelujah. 
where there would be no longer Jews and Gentiles. There'd be no longer bond and free masters and slaves. Where there would be no longer men and women, female and male. I'm going to show you a scripture where he made us all one in Christ. Oh, Lord. Help me. A man... Man's supposed to be over the woman. Man's supposed to be the one. Hallelujah. He's the leader. She's the follower. But when it comes to the unity of the spirit, <laughs> I said when it comes to the unity of the spirit, we are all one. Hallelujah. Genesis, uh, Galatians 3 and 26. Hallelujah. He said, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord told me this this morning. If you're going to work with other people, you have to lose your personal identity. Uh, you got to lose your personal identity. I am who I am. No, I am one of the children of God. I have been baptized just like you. I received the Holy Ghost just like you. My name is not what it is, but I am a child of God. I am a son of God. If I had a spiritual license plate, it would have Jesus on it. Who does this car belong to? Jesus. <laughs> Wouldn't have a title on it. It would have a, a name. Five letters. Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. We cannot be productive. We cannot work with each other if we keep our individual identity. It breaks the unity of the spirit. Because his spirit put us together and his spirit keeps us together. Most high. 27, for as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Did I read that right? And I know the women, the women, y'all going to clap your hands. <laughs> now that does not wipe out what God said in the third chapter of Genesis. That does not change the position that God put man in, in his creation. But it's just saying if you're saved and your wife's saved, who shall not? If you're filled with the Holy Ghost and she filled with the Holy Ghost, when God looks at us, he sees the unity of the Spirit. 
Not marital situations. Not who's the slave and who is the master. Not who is the male and who is the female. Not who is a Jew and who is not a Jew. That is kind of tricky, but the Lord will speak to me today. You can't have unity and individuality at the same time. We must submit ourselves to each other. We must believe that we're in this together. I got my little part. You got your little part. But we need both parts for unity. We must preserve the unity of the spirit in the barn of people. I'm almost done. We need forbearance with one another. Forbearance. Where we will be able to stand criticism and one's own opinion about something. If it's not my idea, it ain't gonna work, but we have to find out what is the best idea for everybody. The Bible said, through the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Oh, hallelujah. I'm almost done. But God don't put all the eggs in one basket. Give somebody nine gifts and another one no gifts. But he distributes the gifts. He distributes the abilities. Matthew 25 said he gives according to our several abilities. My father could play instruments, but I can't play instruments. My brother played in a band, but I can't play a lick. And I used to be discouraged a little bit because they got all these beautiful talents, can read a book and remember everything they read. Oh, Jesus. What did I get? <laughs> they got all this stuff, and I, I, I can't do nothing like they can do, but God knew what he was doing. God put us all together so we could help each other. He don't put all the eggs in one basket. He doesn't put all the intellect in one basket. He doesn't put all the talents in one basket. He doesn't put all the administration in one basket. But he fills the basket up with diverse people who are united and kept together by one spirit. The Holy Ghost being in Christ, being one, is Formulated by God himself. I can take people that probably under ordinary circumstance would not be able to work with each other. But I just fill them with the Holy Ghost. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And I fill somebody else up with whatever they need, and I talk to them, and I tell them, work together in the church. Preserve unity in the church. Do what I told you to do, and leave the rest alone. Don't try to do everything. Let somebody else do something. When they do it good, tell them you did a good job. Oh, hallelujah. When they've showed great talent and ability, tell them, thank God for what he gave you. Thank God for what he put in your life. Hallelujah. I appreciate you. You did my soul good today. So what you trying to do? I'm trying 
to preserve unity. Hallelujah. 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 I'm trying to work with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm trying to be, hallelujah, not up in front all the time, trying to be a leader over everybody. I appreciate my deacon, my auxiliary leader, my treasurer, my praise team, everybody in this church that contributes something to the good of the church. I'm declaring today, your pastor appreciates you. God help me if I had to play the piano and the drums and sing and do the praise team, sing all the songs, take care of all the money, collect it, count it, keep record of it, if I had to write all the letters, if I had to write my own pastor's desk, I wouldn't be able because God sent me somebody to write it for me because I don't even know how to type. Transparency. So to all of those people who feel <laughs> individualism, I'm telling you, if we want to preserve unity, we must see others better than ourselves. We must seek to work together for the same purpose, same goal, and the same objective. Hallelujah. When the saints get together, there is no program, be my lips, that can be held back from Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church. Uh, Y'all know the clap on that one. I ain't trying to make you clap, but you ought to clap on that one. Because I've been here for 15 years, and I've seen some tremendous programs. Go forth in this church and sometime with a small amount of people. But when the council came, we were on one accord. When the Hebrew college came, we was on all one one accord. We had people bumping into each other. Can I get an amen? Trying to make sure that the program succeeds. That's all I'm saying. Let us endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Let us preserve and maintain what we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hang in there. Hold on. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give up. But keep trying to do all you can to help our church. And watch God work. And watch God move. We had three souls baptized in the last two weeks. I don't know what's going to happen today. This is not really a salvation message. This is more of an instructional message. But I've seen people get saved on instructional message. Amen. It's whatever the Lord said. But let us work for unity and watch unity work for us. Amen. The glue that holds unity together is love. It's love. That's the glue that holds it together. It's a copy love. 
where love is absent, there's always confusion and strife and dysfunction. But wherever love is, it brings a good result by just being there and being active and working in the midst of the people. Hallelujah. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope this was a little diversion from last week. Amen. And the week before, it was a turning point. Last week was a good man who needed salvation. But I don't go that way. I go by what the Lord tell me. And that is on October the 28th, a Monday evening, uh, okay. the Youth Department will be hosting a Harvest Festival. All are invited to come and worship with us during that service. Now, at this time. We hope that you and your family enjoyed our broadcast today. I want to give you a personal invitation to come and to worship here in Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church. If you need transportation, you can call 513-861-2812. If you need prayer, you can call 513-559-9442. We hope and pray that you will come and be with us in our service. You and your family are welcome to come and worship with us here in Zion Temple. May God bless you. May he strengthen you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.